Sorry, I'm looking the wrong way. I'm thinking the second period. So this faceoff will be in the Cougar zone. It'll also be a power play opportunity. It is going to be a power play opportunity. This one's going to go against the Cougars. It's going to be a power play for the Decatur Blaze. And this is a big one. You know, you want to you want to start chipping away at that lead. You want to try to put a goal up here. You want to get yourself back into it one step at a time. That's the only way to get there in a game like this. Look for something to be possibly drawn up after this faceoff. The Colts neck New Jersey native in Sam Zatera, the one in the box for that hook. So you more towards your neck of the woods. Yeah. Or uh, that's the one thing for the Cougars too. They got a couple guys that are not just from Illinois. There's a shot that's deflected by Jesse Heist to the right wing corner on the start of the kill for the Cougars. Rubbing off of it, check there was trapped to get that out. It gets a little bit of help from Utera as this trickles back into the play zone. Well, I'll tell you what, seeing this organization, seeing the way the Chicago Cougars are put together from the broadcast crew up here in the booth all the way down to the coach and the GM, who is down on the ice and also the president of this team, you can see why players choose this place and you see why guys would come from Colts Neck, New Jersey. I came from New Jersey. I love the pizza, love the team as well. A great organization. Really like having me here. I'm really happy you're, I'm here this week. Shane Johnson brought this one across the blue line of the Cougars as he holds on, gives it off along the left wing half boards, making it a move around one, taking it behind the net, looking for the wraparound, maybe holds up there, takes a backhanded shot for the roof, then goes up into the netting for Dalton Parrish. Not a bad chance there and not a bad thing to try because you do have Jesse Heist down in the butterfly but he was actually able to get the shoulder up there anyway. It was a good thought process there you know he looked like he was going to pass try to get it back up to the blue line but you haven't seen many shots from that odd angle and Heis was not really ready for it at first but he's able to quickly move he's a quick side to side mover in that net and that's why he's been so successful this year. Definitely has been one of the best goals against averages in the league in Jesse Heise as this goes to the left wing corner where the Decatur Blaze will pick it up in their own end. Try and start back up as we reach the minute mark of the penalty for the Blaze on the power play. Top of the left circle, Dalton Parrish looking to send it towards the left point, but a good stick by Dagnall sends it back down. Jonathan Dagnall has been impressive on the kill. Oh, he's been impressive everywhere on the ice today, even with that goal. He's had a good day. He's got to be happy. He takes home a goal that he didn't think he was going <laughs> to get in a pass. He, I mean, he might as well have gotten the assist on it, too. That's an assist and a goal. <laughs> Pretty much. Dagnall brought this one back into the zone, killing off more time for the Cougars, holding it along that near side. <laughs> nice little play. You know, the, one, one of the benefits of being a broadcaster in some of the spots we are, you could see Patrick Kelly using a little bit of the elbow there to get it into the face of Dagnall. Obviously, the official can't see that. That's one of the benefits of our angle. <laughs> you know, if they were officiating from up here, I'm sure there would be a lot more calls. Oh, plenty more. As this one goes to the left wing corner, John Irviter behind the net. Still holding on to it, his team still on the power play for one more second, and it's back to five on five. So another successful kill for the Cougars. Dumped down to the right wing corner, but the penalty was already over, so that's an icing. And you could see uh, Brad Stouffer's there kind of look up and close his eyes as uh, maybe just like, come on, guys. <laughs> that's a, and this is a disappointing power play for the Decatur Blaze and head coach Zach Pearson. You really come out, you put the pressure on, you've been looking for all night. That was the best two minutes of hockey we've seen out of Decatur all night and unable to put a goal home, unable to get enough shots on net, and that's just been the mantra tonight. It's been the, un the lack of ability to put the puck on net when needed. Right wing circle face off inside the Cougars zone. One by the Cougars, let Mansky with control. Try to send it over to Sullivan, gets it to him in the slot, takes a shot there and scores! Mike Sullivan making it now 7-0 Cougars with 16.42 left here in the third. Nice play by the former captain of the Janesville Jets. Oh, speed kills, speed kills. We set it in the open, we set it again and again, and that is a situation where it's a race for the puck. Both players at the same spot on the ice when they got near center, and a race to the puck is won by Sullivan, and he puts a beautiful little backhand in. Dan, we started to talk about Mike Sullivan a little bit, about a guy who's kind of gone through a lot for the over the last little bit of time. Like you said, a guy who, who's definitely going to be playing at the next level in college. Pass back to Sullivan as he takes a pass over towards Letmanzi, who sent it through the slot. Nobody was there. Goes down to the left wing corner and comes back along the left wing corner boards. Free back to Sullivan. Looking for a place to go with the puck down in the right wing corner. Backhands it back up to the right point. Olsen at the point. Sends a shot low. Goes wide into the left wing corner. Back up to Olsen at the left point. Can't hold it in there as it'll get past him and go down. Heist telling him where to go with the puck before it deflects off of a player for the Blaze who dumps it to the left wing corner by O'Doherty. 
Cougars have it back behind their own net, back to let Mansky. And you know, you get to this point in the game and you heard it from Coach Stouffer down there on the bench during the intermissions, there's a huge hit down on the ice, taking the punishment there was Hunter Shipman. He's slow to get up, but he looks okay. He actually got back up, I was impressed. He, he, he bounced up pretty well for a guy, that was a hard, I mean, we heard it up here in the booth, that's how hard of a hit it was. Sullivan fought through two checks, gets a pass out into the slot for his shot, Nickerson not able to finish it off, a nice save by Kemalecki falling down, Mike Sullivan making a play. That would have been a top 10 nominee on SportsCenter if that assist goes through to the goal there, but Kamalecki gets in the way, no dun -dun -dun. Da -da -da tonight. Kamalecki could have been, you could put Kamalecki on there maybe with the glove that he got over. It was it was an incredible play and we go back to what I was talking about with Coach Stouffer and you're seeing it right now, he said it's habits, you know hockey's all about habits and you can't you can't have a bad period here just because you're leading 7-0 right now. You have to finish a game and that's what they're trying to do. You're seeing it all over the ice from Chicago. They're not letting up. Smart play by Jesse Heise. He came out of his net to play it towards that left wing corner as Micah Young was streaking in to try and create an opportunity for the Blaze. Cougars take the puck back after a board battle on the far side, pass towards the right wing corner, bounces away from Rayback on the turnover. Blaze back with control behind, try to feed it towards the slot. Good stick by Beltrami to just throw it to the right wing corner for his team to battle for it. Puck bounces free right to Hauka as he has it in front of his own net. Skates out along the right wing. His breakout pass goes past a couple of players, but it goes right on net, so they are able to make a change. No icing. Kemalecki sent it in behind. Stretch pass over towards the far side. Out of the reach of the player there in John Irviter. So instead, we have an icing on the blaze. Bring it back into their zone with 14.37 left to go. It's 7-0 Cougars. And you're getting to the point in the game now where as the Decatur Blaze, you're trying to build things. You know, you're, you're trying to find what you can work on. There's always something to work on in a game of hockey. There's always a place to get better. And especially at this level, you're trying to get better. You're trying to get each individual player to the next level. And the Decatur Blaze here, a lot of teaching moments for the coach out there on the bench. Herder ended up whipping on his shot a little bit, which allowed for the Blaze to try and counter. But a good defensive play by the Cougars. They take it back, comes to the near side towards Trap, gives it off to Krop, who got it to the neutral zone before he turned it over to Parrish. Parrish along the left wing half boards, good hit by Trap, frees the puck along the left wing half boards. Blaze still with control, bounces over his stick, so maybe it's a chance for the Cougars to exit the zone. So comes to Peters along the near side, breakout pass on a Trap stick along the left wing, went around one and back over to the near side. There's a good hit by Peters that freed the puck up for a moment before it comes back to John Irviter. Irviter around one, try to go around another, but a good stick by Peters slowed him up before he's able to dump it down in by Her Irviter in behind where it comes to locking it. And this has been the best line for Decatur all day. They're trying to put some pressure on it. It's Micah Young, it's Irviter. You've seen them all, you've heard the names, you've heard the plays, but they've just been unable to get the puck in front of the net. They're controlling the puck in the corners, they're controlling it at the blue line, but they're unable to fill that center of the ice, and that's really where the goals come from. You've seen the Cougars score from there plenty of times tonight. Crop with a move around one, gets it to the left wing corner, trying to feed a pass out in front. Let Mansky will come in and take the puck. The top of the left circle is shot. Also, that deflected off a few players. Lomberg trying to take a shot, diving across his crease to make the save was Kamalecki as it goes back up to the right point. Left point, Olsen low wrister goes wide of the net and to the right wing corner. Let Mansky back up high, back to Olsen, risks it in again, trying to get a tip in front from Lomberg, but it's covered up by Kamalecki. He just keeps ha having to make some big saves. That diving save he made there, one of the best we've seen from him tonight. Let's watch this one develop. That's a hard slap shot from the top. A rebound try doesn't go. Another try, and it's a sprawling save. The fact that he's able to get his body not only to the left side of the net there, but lay himself out to make the stop with the glove, it's just impeccable. I want you to take your hands at home, folks, and cover that scoreboard at the top and just praise this goaltender, Kamalecki, for keeping it where it is. He has seen 56 shots already. Here's, there's a shot that gets through, and that's a save by Kamalecki. Make it 57 shots he's seen now. Faceoff goes towards the, we'll see what they'll put it. They're gonna put it in the left circle here with 12.50 left to go. Yes, seven nothing lead for the Cougars, but that many shots, and we've still got a lot of third period left. Yeah, and we look over at the scoreboard here. The uh, update is gonna be Dell's Ducks, a 5-0 win over the Blaine Energy who are chasing this team, the, the Decatur Blaze in the standings. And there's a shot and goal from Olsen, a, a, a puck that kind of just, it, it sailed into the top right corner, rainbowed in. It, it, it's just a weird coincidence on how it happened because you have a player trying to like throw his hand out to try and grab it 
in front of Kemelecki, and then Kemelecki that's on his blocker side, he was a little bit screened by his own guy. You see Olsen there, he shoots, and I believe that hits the catching glove. I believe that's a glove stop by the defenseman. He's trying to knock it out of the air, and instead his pinky knocks that one down. It looked like it was on a string on the way into the net. That thing did not look like a hockey puck. It looked like a uh, tightrope. Cougars not done as they have a three on two developing before the Blaze are able to get back up to the right point. Cougars still with control. Blade Beltrame top of the left circle as he sends that into a leg. That one stings a little as there's a low wrister sent in by Hauk as it goes back to the left wing corner. Trying to send it back down low was number 16 for the Cougar. Or sorry, that was, uh, that was Butera who tried to send it back down low as this goes back in behind. Almost said 16 for the Blaze. As Beltrame starting up from his own end. Goes around one, another into the slot as he tries to fight through two and he almost gets in for the chance, but it ends up behind the net. Made that move maybe a little too late. Back in behind, Cougars still with control. Pass up to Butera, high slot. That one deflects up into the glass towards the right wing half boards. Two players got tangled up there. Butera, one of them, back out into the neutral zone. Butera still trying to get that hat trick though as he has two goals tonight. Van Dyke, top of the left circle, feeds it for Sullivan. Sullivan trying to go around one, circles back round, and he loses an edge, it looked like, as he gets back up to his feet. Butera holding it in at the left point. Micah Young trying to take it back for the blaze, but Cougar still with control. Van Dyke up to the left point for a shot. Save made by Kemelecki on the shot from Lockenin. So faceoff goes to the left circle with still 8-0 now. Cougars, 11-19 left. You know, this is my first time calling a Cougars game with you, and... I I just got to ask, I mean, is Beltrami really a defenseman? Because he's looking <laughs> more like a scoring centerman than he is a defenseman at some times tonight. I think he might have played a little bit of forward, but he is a defenseman. Oh, he is just an incredible stick handler with the puck. He knows what to do in the offensive side of the ice. Puck goes to the left wing corner. Trap frees it up for the Cougars momentarily before the Blaze take it back. Along the far side, just held in at the right point by Krop. His team able to chase down after left wing corner and then you've got two players going at it over along the far side peters one of them as they're getting pulled apart and a player down by the blaze i think we're having a penalty go against peters as well you heard the reaction from the crowd on that too yeah and that looks like a hard hit into the boards not making any friends over there and this is this is what happens in a game of this magnitude this nature you know this is a decatur team with a lot of pride and an eight nothing score right now there this is where you kind of try to gain that pride back. The game of hockey is a physical sport, especially out here in the Midwest, as I've come to know. And, and, and these guys, they, they have a lot of pride. They're not going to take any, uh, any guff from anyone else. And they're just going to send Peters off. I don't know if it's going to be a gamer or if they're just sending him off just to, I think it is because there's still 10.57 and Peters slamming the, the door shut you saw as that. he eggs it. Yeah, that's, that's some disgust from Peters. Peters not happy with the call. You could tell he did not think that, that that should have resulted in a game ejection. He was going to be sent off. He's going to be out for the rest of this one. But, you know, a five-minute major going the way. The captains of either team making their way out there to talk with the officials. Micah Young on one side for the Blaze and Matt Olson for the Cougars. One thing to point out for the Cougars, too, right now, they're missing one of their top six forwards. Mike Watson, he's been out with an illness this weekend, and, and he's a huge guy for the Cougars, but he's not here tonight. And, and once again, you know, I, I hate to repeat myself, but depth, and, and that's something the Cougars have just prided themselves on all year long. And this is a situation where next guy up, it's that next guy up mentality, especially in the game of hockey, you know. There's no waiting around. There's no, hey, we'll wait for him to get back. We'll get better when he's back. No, we're better today. And that's what the Chicago Cougars mantra has been. And a coach like this, a coaching staff like this, an organization like this, they're not going to take one injury or one illness as something that's gonna let them give up at all. They're gonna step in, they're gonna keep filling up the roster. So they do put a five minute major on the board. You also have a penalty on the other side where that's only a two minutes. So we'll have two minutes of four on four and then we'll have the very uncommon three minutes of power play time. If the Blaze score a goal, it stays on there of course because it's a five minute major. That is correct and this should be this should be a little bit of an interesting exchange. You know, an eight nothing game, a lot of open ice. We'll see how the Cougars decide to play it. They've been able to control the puck do they keep pushing forward? I think after that exchange, they're going to. As Lockin and you see carrying it in, so that should tell you everything you need to know right there. Blaze with the counter here. Micah Young crossing the blue line, takes a shot from the high slot. Jesse Highs right into the stomach, holds onto it in the butterfly for a left wing circle faceoff. 10.35 left to go, minute 39 of that four on four. A tale of two tenders here, you know. On one side, you have a goaltender facing 60 shots plus, 
on this side you have highs who you know it's been very long lulls between tests and sometimes a goaltender can get beat because of that lack of shots and I've heard from a lot of goaltenders they'd sometimes rather the higher shot total I don't think anybody would want to face the firing squad that Kamalecki's faced tonight but highs doing a good job of staying alert when needed there's been a few chances that have come his way that could have gone through after this play develops here, I'll tell you the difference in shots on either side as the Cougars control. Pass over to Schiffman, comes over to the near side towards Van Dyke, who tips it into the play zone. Looking to put a hit on a player there, but avoiding it was the player for the Cougars as it was Justice Cree who tried to. You're seeing the hitting start to pick up here towards the end of this one. Dagnall going in behind the net to try and take it back for the Cougars. Comes back over to the near side. Van Dyke's stick as he gets taken off by two players and a hand up into the air. I think we're going to have a call go on maybe the Decatur Blaze or a Cougar again. We'll see who it is. They got mixed up in the corner. It was a lot of bodies down there. And a lot of times when you see four on four, that ice opens up. But you can tell these two teams not making any friends right now. They're looking to hit each other. They're looking to find each other. Charge, I think, was the call that I just saw. The charge is the call. It's going to be Decatur going to the bench. That's number 27, Shane Johnson out of Bakersfield, California, the California product. He's going to find his way on to the penalty box. And that's something that kind of hinders your team. You're still going to end up with power play time after because of the five-minute major, but less Correct. than what you would have. And once again, it's a situation where you're, you're kind of you're kind of hurting yourself if you're the Decatur Blaze. You're getting in your own way. You know you don't want to fight against yourself in a situation like this. You want to give yourself as much time as you can with the extra man with the way they've struggled to control the puck. Four on three right now for the Cougars. The Blaze able to send this one down towards Jesse Heise, who will touch it up in behind. And I was alluding to the shot total difference. 61 for the Cougars, only 11 shots on goal for the Decatur Blaze. That's what you want for one period, not three. Yeah, and it's, it's just an incredible, incredible job of the Cougars. As there's a shot from Olsen, blocker save made from the left circle shot. Having it in behind is Nickerson, looking for a place to go. Skating up into the left circle. Coming around, drops it off for Olsen. Back down low, looking for a pass through the slot. Up to Hunter Shipman, sends a shot towards the goal. And then getting it in front for the rebound was Nickerson. He makes it now 9 to nothing in favor of the Cougars. They just pile it on when they get the opportunities. This will put it back to four on four hockey with a minute 10 of that still to come. Nickerson does it again. Nickerson continues to be successful here today. Drives home another goal. Face off uh, will go to center ice. I mean, what can you say? They, they, four on three, the power play still working for the Cougars. It is, and you know, that, that's another situation where you put a body in the right place at the right time. Nickerson jumps right in front of the net. He's waiting there, stalking the fray, and that puck drops right to his feet, right place, right time. And you know, there's something to being in the right place at the right time. It takes a heady player to know where to be on the ice. Of course, Hunter Schiffman gets an assist for that off of that shot that he sent in because, I mean, Kamalecki had to fight that off because that was a lot on it from Schiffman up at the point, and he wasn't up near the blue line. He was kind of in between the point and circles. So when you're that close and you get to load up and get everything on it, that is a, a, a tough shot for a goalie to stop anyways. It really is, you know, and, and Hunter Schiffman, you've seen the mentality that this team has when it comes to Hunter Schiffman. They are okay with him firing shots from the top blue line there. Put him at the top of the zone, let him fire shots, and just fill the lane with bodies. Just try to get near the crease, try to get close to that goaltender, try to get in his way, because it's tough to stop a Hunter Schiffman shot. Definitely is the faceoff. I'm not sure what's going on, that why we're having so much trouble getting this to go that I, I guess they still have the one penalty off they're having trouble getting it off so they're like you know what just let it run out we know it's four on four that is true that is true they have not taken the penalty off the board we've had some score issues tonight it isn't it is a new venue for the Chicago Cougars tonight first time in this ring first time on this rink and they've been on multiple rings in this one building is the funny thing too Zatera with it near center ice brings it across into the zone of the blaze takes a shot from the right circle Puck fought off, top of the right circle off the rebound, shot hits off of a leg, goes back towards the left circle for Letmanski's shot that deflects up into the netting and out of play. 8.42 remains here in the third, and you know, 9-0 the score, and you, you just continue the habits talk, but you look at the Decatur side of the ice, you know, this is a team right now that's going to have to play this Cougars team in the first round of the playoffs if the season ends today, and you, you saw Dell's Ducks with a 5-0 win, over the Blaine Energy who are trying to make their way back in the standings. And this Decatur team has still got a six point lead for that eighth spot. So you want to try to put a good test against the Chicago team late. 
and leave them with a bad taste in their mouth before they go play in the first round of the playoffs. Blaze win the face off, chipping to himself off the glass was Justice Creed. Good defensive play, gives it back for the Cougars on the stick of Ledmanski. Up to Zatera on the far side. Puck ended up stopping right in front of the bench of the Cougars instead. Goes right to Hauk who will dump it in. Behind the net, goes towards the left wing corner of the Blaze, have it back, Parrish's pass to the near side as they try to work it up. Ledmanski coming in to try and take it back for the Cougars. Gets it off to Zatera, goes back to Ledmanski, high slot, <laughs> takes a shot from that left side as it goes back to the right wing corner. And back out into the neutral zone, the Cougars dump it right back in. Left wing corner, Blaze with control, Cougars on a change. Cougars do a good job to get the change there as the Blaze try to control the puck in their own end, trying to get things under control. Near side, Cody Rayback with the puck, fighting through a couple of checks, lifts a puck, lifts the stick of a player, tries to put a check on Micah Young, who manages to hold on to it. Pass comes over to the near side, player got behind the defense, taking the shot there, Highs with the save, that might have hit off the post too, on the shot from John Irviter, and then we got two players in behind, and Irviter and Beltrame exchanging words, and now finally being broken up by the officials. And you're starting to see that, that brotherly love down there on the ice. You know, I call games in Philly and I always use the term brotherly love when these guys start getting at it. And this is the point of the game where it, it's a lot of puffing out the chest, a lot of reminding people that, that you still got the pride, you still want to play. And Decatur trying to get a little physical dish out some physicality to uh, Chicago. And it looks like it's gonna come back to uh, bite him here as the man who had that breakaway chance, number seven, John Erbiter, who has been very heavily involved. He's probably been the standout player so far for this Decatur team. He's gonna be sent off. Yeah, that's a big loss, like you said, for them. When you look at the matchup between these two, Dan, they played each other four times before this. There's gonna be some talks here between the officials and, and obviously the captains, I'm sure, as they figure everything out. It's a lot of Decatur Blaze players, and a player just pointed at one of the players on the bench of, and now guys are getting, I think guys are getting thrown out on either side, I'm not sure, but there's a lot of talking. You even see a player sticking his head out, trying to get his player to come into the box, and Mike Sullivan, so you talk about a leader there, trying to get him to come on, sit down, and be quiet. But back to what I was trying to get to, as this has kind of just turned into a weird state of affairs, is getting sent off now is Jake Cunningham. This is the last time these two teams meet, and maybe for a good reason here yeah. with the way that things are going. It's been 4-0 in favor of the Cougars up until this point. A 7-4 win back on October 2nd, then an 8-0 win on the 3rd of October. Then you go to the 4th because they played each other three in a row, 5-1 win for the Cougars, then a 6-2 win for the Cougars on the 23rd of January. So those are the times that they've met each other so far, and obviously it's a 9-0 lead right now with some time left, and the Cougars with the lead. We've had multiple guys get thrown out too because you have Butera getting sent off the ice and I don't know if that's a good decision either to send that many guys off because now you have multiple guys who are now out of the rink exactly. and they can meet up off the rink. That, you, you never want to have that happen. You always want to keep an eye on everybody and you know, you have this kind of a game and it starts to turn into a bit of a gong show here, you know. It, it is just, <laughs> it, the referees have to try to get control of this and you look at the Decatur bench, the amount of players they've thrown out of this game, there are not many left on that Decatur bench. They're gonna be skating with very few skaters the rest of the way. And here's the thing too, y you thought that the five minute major would turn into something for the Decatur Blaze. Any. They don't get any power play time yeah. on it because of penalties they've taken. And now they have a five minute major, so the Cougars are gonna have the majority of the rest of this game on a power play. There's a shot from Schiffman that comes towards the near side taken in behind as the Blaze look to try and work it out. Schiffman pinching in down low to get it onto his stick. Right wing corner avoids one check. And then we have a whistle go here. We're gonna have a player on the Blaze go into the box. Four. It's gonna be four on three after this. It was four on four there. We still have a minute 17 left on an earlier minor. Now we're gonna go to four on three for the Cougars. And if I saw the signal right, this might be unsportsmanlike. This is this game's just turned incredible. I mean, y you watch the, it goes. It's a tale of two games. It's yes. It starts off. It's it's just the incredible play of the Cougars, the control of the Cougars, the great puck handling, the great shots on goal, the the great domination of puck control. Of the Cougars now it's turned into kind of two teams that are unhappy with one another, and it's really slowed the pace. It's very late here. Maybe these guys are getting cranky. Maybe it's past bedtime. It, it is a bit late here, you know, especially. Uh, 
even you know Midwest 12:30. Uh, you go to the East Coast, it's it's even uh, later 1:30. It's 1:30 <laughs> for me right now. I'm normally in bed having sweet sweet dreams about good hockey games. So timeout was taken by the Decatur Blaze, and, and I really like the timeout to be taken now, Dan. When you when you talk about how this game has kind of spiraled out of control for the coach in Zach Pearson to take this timeout, it's really uh, it shows you what kind of coach he is. Yeah, you, you need to do it. You need to take control of your troops. You need to tell the guys, look, it's it's not worth it at this point. It's not worth it to get mixed up in it. You gotta stay above it. You can't let this game get any more out of hand. It, and I know that it comes down to pride. I understand the hockey mentality. I understand you gotta get physical, but there has to be a time where you have to look at that scoreboard and you need to try to worry more about putting that goal up than putting putting fist to face, you know what I mean, than trying to fight. Right. You gotta you gotta get out there, you gotta make a play and execute right here and, and we hope Decatur and uh, Chicago are ready to get back down and both start executing. Well, you know the Cougars are salivating right now because they get to have only three players out on the blaze side. They get a four on three that'll eventually turn into a pretty long five on three. Or, well, a shorter five on three, but then a lot of five on four. Cougars with the puck in their own end as they had to start from there as the Blaze were able to dump it down and kill off a little bit of time. Dagnall up the right point, back to Olsen. Back to Dagnall up high point, sends it over and back across, back to Schiffman. A little bit of back and forth here. Olsen to Schiffman out of his reach. I think maybe the Cougars here just trying to kill off some time. They end up working it back out into the neutral zone, trying to get this game over with. And yeah, if you hear that barking, that's the dogs being called off, it seems like. I, I think that Chicago is happy and content with a little puck control. They'll take the chances when they get them like they did right there. But they're not going to look for the bevy of shots they've been putting up. Olsen can't hold that one, and it comes back out into the neutral zone where Olsen comes from center ice back to the zone of the Cougars. Pass up to the point to Schiffman, finds the player who just came on. See them getting some extra guys out here as well as there's a shot. Dagnall almost able to get out of the weave for it. Comes right to him, back up to Olsen at the left point. Cross ice to Schiffman, right point. Back to Olsen, left point, back down low as they look for something there. Dagnall circling back around, back up, and now it turns into a five on three as Sullivan's out of the box. Up the point, shot from Schiffman. Save made by the goalkeeper in Kamalecki. Going off now is Jonathan Dagnall. They get some fresh legs while you've got tired legs out there for the Blaze. Schiffman coming in, gets a wrister that hits off of a player. Let Mansky right there to take it back, but he passed it right to a Decatur Blaze player in O'Doherty. Uh, yeah, and, and this Cougars team, even when they're kind of slowing down, there's still the execution, there's still the crisp passing tape to tape to tape. Pass into the high slot for Sullivan. Goes back towards Olsen, who is wide open. A good look, he just couldn't get the pass over on the feed. Jesse High slowing things down by his team here. You can see him calling to just, just keep it calm. Reset as Walkenden picked up the puck. Makes the pass along the right wing to let Mansky into the right circle. Takes a backhanded pass towards the slot. Sticked away nicely by the Decatur Blaze. Back to the right wing corner. We're back to five on four now. You've got about 2.20 left on that one. It comes back up to the left point for Lockenin. Right point now, back in for Lockenin. You see them working in the outside quite a bit. Good work on the passing, that's for sure. Lockenin taking a wrister from the point, quickly hit out by the Blaze as it'll come back towards Jesse Heise. As we're at the 4.45 mark of the third period, nine left in lead for the Cougars. And just, you know, we say it again, I, I'm out here, you know, as we wind down in this game, just the, the incredible show put on by the Chicago Cougars. Any any Chicago Cougars fans watching at home, is that's a nice save. It, you guys, just a wonderful product and a wonderful team. It's been fun to watch out here today. And I think they've handled everything that's happened pretty well. Obviously, some players have been thrown out, but that's on both sides. I think both teams, e even though this, this could have easily boiled over into something worse, and they haven't let that happen. You see it happen a lot in the game of hockey. It continues to boil, 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 and eventually it gets out of hand. The refs have done a good job. You know, we questioned at first the throwing out of players, but it seems to have worked out and calmed everybody down a bit. Sullivan with it on the left wing half boards behind for Zatera as he takes it behind the net to the right wing corner. Looks to feed it back towards Sullivan, who goes back over along the right wing half boards to Hauk. Good poke check, freed it up. Trying to get out in front was Micah Young. He got held up a little bit there. We're looking for the interference call with Zach Pearson, the head coach of the Blaze. Didn't get the call as Van Dyke brings this back in to the Blaze zone. 
holding it at the blue line, sends it back down towards the left wing half boards. They do see a hand up into the air, shot save made, and then it's covered up by Kamalaki. We'll see what the call is now. It's against the blaze, so they go back to five on three for 43 seconds. And they just don't have enough skaters to be taking these penalties at this point. They, they just have a handful of guys on that bench and the legs have to be exhausted at this point. And the fact that these guys are still skating with the will they have, you know, really shows a lot for the Decatur Blaze. Uh, I mean, this you have to be a fatigued roster right now. These guys have to be tired. And to watch them skate the way they have and put up a defensive stand on, on that last penalty kill that's now becoming an even deeper penalty kill, it, it's, it's, tough to, it's tough to see right now. O'Doherty, the one who took that penalty as he goes into the box for the Blaze. The faceoff here on this five on three for the Cougars. Shot from Nickerson from the right circle turned away by the goalkeeper and Kamalecki back up to the right point Schiffman left circle back to the point for Schiffman blocker save made by Kamalecki back in behind it's Nickerson back up to the left point and across to Schiffman who goes back to the player in Olsen Olsen looking for a lane back over to Schiffman who gets one and sends the shot in Kamalecki able to see it the entire way however and hold on to it for face off into the right circle 243 left to go here in the third period, 13 seconds of five on three still. And I think the Cougars, again, like you said, are really calling the dogs off here, just trying to work that puck around more than take, taking shots when they have lanes, but not really pressing the issue. That's it, you, you have to take the shot when you have it. I mean, it, it's almost it's it's almost an insult if you don't. So, so what you're doing, you're playing the game the right way, correctly. You're, you're playing it when you have the shooting lane, you take the shot, but without that, you try to pass, you work on the passing game, you keep the puck in the zone, you control it as much as you can. As there's a pass in towards the slot for Van Dyke as he tried to send it to the near side for a player who was open, but it was sticked away. Gavin Nickerson, left circle, hits that one off the side of the post as it goes back up to the right point for Olsen. Olsen, right point, looking for a place to go. Sends it back to the near side. We are back to five on four hockey, by the way, as puck goes to the left wing corner for Lomberg, who cuts in, looking for the give and go pass from Nickerson, can't feed it through. Good defensive play by the Blaze. Shipman loading up from the left point. Sticked away nicely by Patrick Kelly. Sent it to the right corners. There's a shot. That one just caught Kamalecki off guard. Hit him in the mask on the shot from Hunter Shipman. What a shot there. Back into the right circle. Cougars still with control of the puck here. There's a shot and Kamalecki gets the glove onto it and holds on. Minute 38 left to go here. 13 seconds left of power play time for the Cougars. Faceoff should go to the right circle, I believe, is where they're going to put it. Cougars still keeping the pressure on, even though they're not taking as many opportunities as they could. I think we're going to have a penalty against the Cougars as well. Didn't see what happened. Gavin Nickerson goes into the box. So it ends up being four on four for 26 seconds, and then a power play to end the game for the Decatur Blaze. Called off was Justice Cree. Or no, I think he was just being talked to by his coach. Or no, he's getting called off because they had too many players out there for a second. So it ends up being, it, well, it ends up being four on four and then a power play. Pass up to the point off the faceoff for a shot that bounces away and taken back by the Cougars. Zatera on the near side. Skates up into the zone of the blaze. Tries to make a move around one to the right wing corner. Try to pass it back up to let Mansky the Blaze take it back. Comes to the near side. Zoliner enters the zone, throws it off the end boards, off the back of the net, and bounces free back to the defense of the Cougars on the stick of locking it. Let Mansky able to knock it out of the air with his glove. Had it on his stick momentarily, almost lost it. Goes back to his defense. We're now to a power play for the Decatur Blaze to end here as we're under the minute mark. Pass to the near side, Zatera enters the zone as the Cougars just trying to kill off the rest of the game, trying to hold on to something for Jesse Heise. Puck in behind the net. Right wing corner, Blaze with the puck, breakout pass to the near side, a lot of room to skate for Patrick Kelly as he crosses the blue line. As he gets upended there on a hip check, puck goes in behind the Hauk for the Cougars, for Zatera as he risks this one high and down to the right wing corner. 24 seconds left to go in the game, but we have a hand up into the air. I think we got a Decatur Blaze player maybe getting a penalty now. I think we're finishing four on four instead. See who ends up going into the box. 
looks like it's Tyler Stevens Clemens who will go off. They're just going to send him off on the uh, off the ice with how much time is left. So face off goes either the left or the right circle. Not sure which one they'll put it in the right circle. So we finish four on four is how this will end up finishing. So third period that's been marred by penalties continues. Face off right circle, blaze zone. There's not a whole lot of time left. They've got to get a player on from the blaze bench into the box too. It's only, it's only two forwards left on the bench for the Decatur Blaze. That's how many guys have been thrown out for them, not, and they were a bit shorthanded to begin with. Race down to the left wing corner. Further fighting with a player there to try and get control. Lost it, turned it over, looking for a pass towards Micah Young. Not able to get it, as that would have been one of the best opportunities for the Blaze. Trapped back the other way on the four-on-four. Four, right wing corner, and that'll do it for the game. Shutout for Jesse Pies as the Cougars win nine to nothing. It was a really good game for the Chicago Cougars from top to bottom. You look at it, each period they get three goals as well. Really consistent throughout. They played a very intense game the entire time. They didn't give up on what their game plan was. They did it throughout, which is something that the Cougars have wanted to see as they've moved forward, and they definitely had it there. We're gonna go down to ice level in just a second. Cougars gonna shake hands, I think, with the Decatur Blaze. This is the last time that these two teams meet. And of course, we've got Dan Kemchek, who's gonna have an interview for us in a little bit as well. See who he decides to grab for that. The Cougars, though, a big win here as they continue their winning streak. Looks like it'll be Matt Olson is who Kemchek will grab. We'll go down to ice level for that in just a second here as Kemchek with the captain and Olson. All right, Dane Pay back down here on the ice one more time after a 9-0 win for the Chicago Cougars. I figured nine goals spread around pretty evenly. Who, who, who better to talk to than the captain, Mr. Matt Olson? Got a goal today. What was the success? Where did it come from? Uh, we just worried about ourselves. We moved the puck, moved our feet. Uh, clearly a better team out there tonight. We just moved the puck and worried about ourselves. You know, end of the game here turns into a little bit of a gong show. As the captain, what are you doing? What are you telling the guys to really keep them from taking any bad penalties? Uh, just, you know, keep composure. You know, they're you know, taking dumb penalties out there, a lot of penalties. You know, we're a class act. We want to stay that way, have a positive image. Now, I want to I want to keep with you here. You know, a lot of good play from your team. You put up over 60 shots on net. Was that the mentality coming in? Was it put them up on that as much as you can? Yeah, we want to jump on right away. Um, they've been on the road this whole week, so we knew they were a little tired. So we just want to get pucks a lot on the net, crash the net. Now, you know, it's a team game. You can see the team game. I can see the way you communicate out there on the ice. As a team, do you guys feel comfortable playing anywhere on the ice, defensemen coming in on the offensive side, forwards getting back in the defensive side? Yeah, we have a lot of D that can jump up in the play, you know, come at fourth man. Uh, create more offense, and we got a lot of guys uh, on the forward side that can play a shutdown D too. What's it going to take to keep this number one spot? Dell's Ducks wins tonight, 5-0. What's it going to take to fend off the Ducks and keep a number one spot in this division? Uh, consistency, uh, playing full 60 every game, take every game like it's a championship game. That's what we need to do. A shutout from the Heisman, a goal from the captain, and a great game from the Cougars. Once again, Dan Kay, I've had a great time on this broadcast, and I hope everyone's had a great time watching. Back to you guys up in the booth. All right, thank you very much, Dan. We appreciate everything as uh, Dan helping us out here tonight as well as uh, we'll get his final thoughts, actually. I'm going to get him to come back up here before we go. But again, 9 nothing win for the Cougars in this one tonight. We'll take a short break, come back with some final thoughts, and get out of here. So uh, stay tuned. on-air talent, and I went to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I'm a 
professional voiceover talent, I went to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I'm an on-air talent, and I went to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I'm a multimedia journalist, and I went to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I'm a sportscaster. I went to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. I'm an on-air talent, and I went to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. What's going on? It's Tilo from Tilo TV, and we're at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting here in Lombard, Illinois. Just wanting to go to the other station, our sister stations. Of course, we're on the other one tonight. They had wrestling on uh, Sports Town Chicago. Big Destiny was what it, what it's called. So it was a Ooh. big night there. A nine to nothing win for the Cougars here at the Leaf Center over the Decatur Blaze. Dan, what were your thoughts here from this one? Well, my thoughts, uh, an incredible game from the Cougars. You could see the skill. You could see they were the far superior team tonight on the ice. And, you know, you talk about wrestling being on your other network, your sister <laughs> station. This turned into a bit of a wrestling match down there at the end. We talked to Matt Olson. He had to keep the guys kind of calm there. Just get to the last second. Get this game to the end. Good thing for the Cougars. They got a lot of good leadership. Olson, one of them. Mike Sullivan, new to the team, but clearly a leader on there. Mike Watson wasn't here today, no. but he's a leader as well. Lombard, they got a lot of leaders on this team as one of the night things. And it's not just older guys, it's younger guys, too, that have been an example. And for the Blaze, obviously it's a tough game, yeah. but, I mean, you kind of have to take it at face value a little bit that, you know, this is the top team, and this is sometimes what happens when, when you guys have a bad game. And that's it. And, you know, we're about to be pushing hashtag Road to Boston, you know, with the USPHL on Twitter. And this is a hashtag Road to Boston type performance. You want to get to Boston at the end of the year if you're one of these best teams in the Midwest. And I think the Cougars are the favorite, the favorite in this division. I think they're the team to beat right now. I ha I've not seen a better team out here. I mean, and when you look at it too, Dan, they, they've really come on, especially this weekend. Now, granted, they're not playing the competition that they were playing earlier on in the year when you're of playing course. the Dallas Ducks, and they do still have to play the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings. That's going to be a fun one to watch. It's up in Wisconsin. Be sure to watch that one because those are the two hottest teams in the Midwest right now, and they're meeting each other up this coming weekend. So that'll be a fun one to watch looking forward to that. But, but again, you said it's getting close to playoff time. This is when you want to play your best hockey that you can, and that's what Cougars seem to be doing. And that's what it's going to take. Come playoff time, it's going to take goaltending like the guys at Gillis and Hive that you have between the pipes. And it's, go it's going to take team efforts in those because those playoff games, they're not 9-0. They're going to be close. They're going to be battles. The defense becomes tougher. Guys blocking more shots. Bodies in the way of pucks. It becomes a much different game come playoff time. But I think this is the kind of team that can survive that type of play. Definitely is. They've got a couple more games. One more home game that we'll have here on Sportstown Chicago for that one will be the last home game for the Cougars. That one against the Ileana Blackbirds, coached by Reed Simpson. So be sure to tune in, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. That'll be the last regular season home game. And then, of course, playoff time. That's when we'll have everything. A quick thanks to our crew who's here tonight. we got Tim Helms, who's been doing all the directing. And, of course, Brian Singleman on the cameras for you tonight as well. We thank him, too. And, of course, thanks to my partner tonight and Dan. Dan, thanks for coming on. Hey, it has been an absolute honor. I watch you guys. And the work you do, the work that this network does, the work that you're both that you, yourself, and your sister station do, it's incredible. And if you're not watching, you better be. Tell everyone to watch because this guy is the next up-and-coming <laughs> thing in broadcasting. I love to hear him on play-by-play. Play and I love the work <laughs> all these guys are doing behind the scenes. I appreciate that, and uh, I appreciate the kind words. That's going to do it here from us, though. For Dan, I'm Chris Labosco. Thanks for coming and watching us. We'll see you next time on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com.